Hello, my name is Tommy from TL Lab and we are in Ruzir Boškovic Institute in Zagreb, Croatia. My host today will be Doctor of Science Milovo Urović from Laboratory for Nuclear Physics. Hello, uh, we are today at the uh, uh, Van der Graaf Accelerator Facility here at our institute. Uh, the accelerator uh, is uh, mainly for producing uh, high energy particles which serve rather different applications and fundamental research in physics. So we are going to take a tour and present to you parts of the accelerator with some technical details. Thank you Mr. Urovic. You're welcome. So, the first piece of equipment that is needed for the accelerator is the ion source, here behind me. Uh, in order to accelerate particles, we use electric fields and to manipulate the magnetic fields. For a particle to feel the fields, it has to be charged. So, uh, depending on the purpose, we have three different ion sources, uh, which produce negatively charged ions which are then accelerated down the tube into the accelerator. In the middle of the accelerator is the high voltage terminal. Uh, the voltage here, about uh, 5 million volts, serves to uh, attract the negatively charged ions and uh, strip them of the electrons inside. So our negatively charged ions become positive and then they are additionally repelled by the same uh, high voltage terminal through the rest of the tube. Here you can see uh, millions of volts for charging the terminal. That's the main uh, source for accelerating. At the end of the accelerator is an analyzing magnet behind me. Uh, it can be thought of as a curve of 90 degrees uh, and different particles with different charge to mass ratio uh, behave differently in this curve. Uh, that enables us to uh, have just, to separate just the particles that we need from the beam. The beam is usually a cocktail of particles but this analysis enables us to very fine tune which beam of which specific energy we want to produce. Then they go later uh, uh, down the tube. Behind me is a switching magnet which enables us to insert the produced beam into one of the five analyzing lines. Uh, depending on the purpose of the measurement and the uh, apparatus we want at the end of the line, uh, we uh, steer the beam into one of these five lines, depending on the uh, switching magnet setting. The first of the lines is microprobe. It enables us to focus the beam with a micrometer precision. Uh, that is routinely used for uh, examining uh, spatial context of a sample or to uh, measure the response of the detector depending on which part of the detector uh, the beam hits. So sometimes we uh, analyze the interstrip regions, the border regions of either sample or detector for which we need such a micrometer precision. The next line is the nuclear scattering chamber uh, in which we put so-called targets, thin films of known material uh, where the incoming beam uh, produces by nuclear reactions new elements. 
uh, these elements are detected on both sides of the beam and uh, the analysis shows the rate, the energies and the excited levels of nuclear that are formed in these reactions. Nuclear reactions don't occur nat naturally on Earth, uh, but here we can uh, model or mm, uh, measure events that take place uh, in other environments like uh, interiors of the stars and sun where new elements are produced. This is the time of flight and elastic recoil line uh, which enables us to mm, measure the recoils from an unknown sample here. And uh, this leg here uh, measures time of flight both with the incoming energy of the particle uh, that is routinely used for identification and with elastic recoil, you basically analyze what sorts of atoms are present in your specimen. So uh, you can think of it as a billiard, as a pool with nuclei instead of small balls. Uh, and uh, our uh, incoming beam uh, just scatters the uh, material in the target and thus enables us to analyze what sort of atoms are present. Unlike chemical analysis, this usually just uh, numbers different atoms and even isotopes. So it's rather useful as a non-chemist and non-destructive method of chemical analysis. This is the small uh, Van de Graaff accelerator machine. Uh, we use it alternatively with the big one, uh, depending on what type of beam and what energy we need. Uh, unlike the big one that has a terminal voltage of uh, 5 million volts, this one goes up to 1 million, but it is very compact and much easier to handle. So uh, it's a good combination to have two possibilities for uh, different types of measurements. So thank you, Mr. Rorich, for presentation of equipment and facility. You're welcome. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Goodbye.